This video is on poles in analog circuits. A pole refers to when a signal loses energy as frequency increases. In other words, when the signal decreases as frequency rises. In the case of a capacitor, the capacitor offers in impedance to current, or rather the capacitor impedes current in a way that its impedance is inversely proportional to capacitance. In other words, when capacitance is greater, the impedance is lower, and it's inversely proportional to frequency, which in the Laplace domain we use the S to refer to frequency. So as frequency increases, a capacitor impedes current less. So in the case of a parallel capacitor, by which I mean a capacitor that is in parallel with a resistor and there's an incoming current, uh, at low frequencies, the capacitor impedes current the greatest. So at low frequency, what we have is that the impedance through the capacitor is much greater than the resistor. So the current goes entirely through the resistor and the capacitor, it's like it's not even there. So that means that at low frequency, uh, this RC network just looks like a resistor and the resistor is the one that dominates. As frequency increases, however, the capacitor impedance starts decreasing, and at very high frequency, the capacitor offers much less impedance than the resistance. In other words, the capacitor impedes the current much less. So that means that the current goes entirely through the capacitor, and it's like the resistor isn't even there. So at very high frequencies, this RC network reduces to a capacitance. So in summary, if we were to, let's remove our markers here, at low frequencies, the network here looks like a resistor, and at high frequencies, it looks like a capacitor. There's a transitional frequency where it transitions from resistor to capacitor. Where is that frequency? That's what we refer to as the pole. So the pole is the transitional frequency, and that happens when the impedance of the capacitor is less than or equal to the resistance of the resistor. So the impedance through the capacitor is inversely proportional to frequency, and all we need to find out is the frequency where this happens. So we solve for S. And S is nothing but the 1 over RC frequency. But that's in radians, so we need to, when we write it in terms of uh, hertz, we want to find out the 1 over 2 pi RC frequency. So the pole refers to the, I'll say generally, the pole refers to the 1 over RC frequency of this network. The interpretation of this is that the capacitor basically shunts the effects of the resistor past that frequency, past that pole location. And that's what we're saying here. So at high frequencies, we see that the capacitor impedance is much lower than the resistance, so all the current goes through the capacitor, and it's like the resistor isn't, isn't even there. Then the voltage across this capacitor is the current into the impedance of the capacitor, which is what we see here with this expression. It's current into the impedance of the capacitor. But we already noted that the capacitor impedance is inversely proportional to frequency, so that means that the voltage is similarly inversely proportional to frequency. Interesting, interestingly, that means if the frequency rises by a factor of 10, the voltage falls by a factor of 10. So that's what we're saying here. The voltage falls by a factor of 10 when the frequency rises by a factor of 10, which is another way of saying that the voltage drops 20 dB per decade because a factor of 10 is 20 dB in gain, and a factor of 10 in frequency is what we call a decade. So when we look at this graph, 
on the x-axis here is log frequency and on the y-axis is gain. So at frequencies uh, that are much lower than the pole, this RC network reduces just to a resistor. So the voltage across the resistor is on change across frequency. Now at frequencies much greater than this pole location, the resistor disappears and therefore the voltage drops with frequency at a rate of negative at a rate of 20 dB per decade. Now the gain, if we define the gain as a translation of input current to uh, output voltage, then that gain is simply the combined impedance of the, of the resistor and the capacitor, because that's what the output voltage is. So the combined impedance is the parallel combination of the resistor and the impedance of the capacitor. Now in electronics, the parallel combination of two impedances is the product of the two divided by the sum of the two. So when we do that product divided by the sum, we get R over 1 plus SRC. But it is very convenient to write this in the form of the pole location. And remember, the pole is the 1 over RC frequency. So if we, if we use the pole instead of RC here, we get S over that pole. And remember, pole, in this case, we're using uh, hertz. So we need to include the 2 pi here. Now, this is very convenient because, or it, this is a very convenient form, because when the frequency is much less than the pole, this term is much less than 1. And remember s is 2 pi frequency, so the 2 pi's cancel, so when the frequency is much less than the pole, this whole term is much less than 1, and the overall gain is just determined by the resistance. Now when we, in the opposite case, when the frequency is much greater than the pole, this term is much greater than 1, so the 1 disappears. In that case, the gain is determined by the capacitor. And it's basically the impedance of the capacitor, which is what we have here, or more specifically, what we have here. So this is a very convenient way of writing the gain uh, if we write it with respect to the pole location, because intuitively we can tell from the graph that if it's much greater than the pole, then the capacitor dominates. If it's much less than the pole, the resistor dominates. In terms of the magnitude, when we take the magnitude of this gain, uh, this S here is what we call an imaginary number. All that means is that we can't just really take the sum of these two components. What we do is we need to take the square root of the sum of the squares. So when we take the magnitude of this, on the top there's no S, so the S just goes straight along and we put it on the top here. But on the bottom we need to do the square root, then the 1 squared plus s squared over 2 pi pc squared. But remember s is 2 pi frequency so the 2 pi's cancel and all we get here is the ratio of the frequency and the pole and that ratio squared. So again at frequencies that are much lower than the pole we get that this term disappears and we get that the magnitude is just determined by the resistor. When the opposite is true, and the frequency is much greater than the pole, that term is much greater than 1, so the 1, the effects of the 1 disappear, and now the square root here cancels the square, in a way, and we just get basically the effects of the capacitor. So we're saying the same thing, and this is a very convenient way of writing the magnitude and a way of being able to derive the magnitude directly and be able to get this graph, which is the Bode plot, what we call the Bode plot. Now let us talk a little bit about phase. What do we mean by phase? So let us first consider the case uh, when the frequency is much greater than the pole. 
if the frequency is much greater than the pole, we're saying that the capacitor is steering all the, is drawing all the input current and the, the resistor is like it's not even there. When we have current going into a capacitor, the voltage doesn't change instantaneously. In fact, the, if the initial voltage across a capacitor is zero, when we put current into it, it's going to start at zero and over time it's going to grow. So what I'm trying to say here is that the capacitor voltage varies slowly. So an interpretation of that is that basically the capacitor delays the input signal. So if we have two sinusoids, so if the input current is a sinusoid, and we'll do this as the input current, and let us label it as I sub n, when we look at the output voltage, the output voltage is going to be delayed. So let me use a different color pen to denote that. So when we look at the output voltage, the output voltage is going to be behind it because it's going to be delayed. It's again a sinusoid, but it's delayed. And in this case, let me label it V sub C. Let me use now a different color. And what we see at the peaks, we can see the delay. And basically, the delays at the top peaks, bottom peaks, or when they cross zero. And this delay here is a delay that we can um, describe in, in terms of time. But with respect to sinusoids, we can also describe with respect to phase shift. So between these two signals, we have up to, and this is what happens when we have a pole, we have up to 90 degrees of phase shift. But remember, this is a delay, so it's a lagging delay, so it is a negative phase shift. So if we want to use an expression to write this phenomenon, we actually look at what expression can give us up to 90 degrees uh, of phase shift, we find that the inverse tan is very useful for that purpose. Because the inverse tan of a very large number is 90. But since this is a negative phase shift, we put a negative in front of it. So when the frequency is much greater than the pole, this is uh, much greater than 1, this ratio. The inverse tan of that is 90, and the phase shift is therefore negative 90. So when we write, when we draw the graph for that, and this is the other side of the Bode plot, the phase shift, on the x-axis we have log frequency. In this case, on the y-axis, then we have phase shift. At frequencies that are much lower than the pole, uh, this inverse tan is zero, which is what we want from here, because at frequencies much lower than the pole, the capacitor doesn't exist, and the resistor does not offer any phase shift or any delay. Now, at frequencies much greater than the pole, the resistor is the one that does not exist, and the capacitor then delays the signal up to 90 degrees, so at frequencies much greater than the pole, we get minus 90 degrees of phase shift. Not surprisingly, at the transitional point is the halfway point. So at the pole, we get negative 45 degrees of phase shift. And this is basically what a pole is in an analog circuit. It's basically the frequency past which a signal uh, decreases at a rate of negative 20 dB per decade. And the phase shift is up to negative 90 degrees. Thanks for watching.